scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want you to pray one last prayer and then we'll sit. The word must walk in my life. Listen, listen, hold on. The Bible said the seed is the word of God. It was sown in three different kinds of soils it was sown but not all of them had a harvest why because between the seed time and harvest an enemy came he didn't do anything to the soil he only did something to the seed i'd like you to declare the problem is never the seed i command the soil of my spirit you must receive seed and it must yield a harvest lift your voice and pray a harvest whose profiting will appear unto all Are you praying? Please don't be distracted. Pray, pray. Don't look around. Pray. Shabakato seketelekata. I speak to the soil of my spirit. Sekos kaparos kadebakatosh. You receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. I declare you receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. You receive the word of God. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. I sing holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. Be seated. Holy Spirit, we have come before you tonight 
we cry for understanding there is nothing we can know except you open up our understanding Lord I pray for those here and the thousands of people around the nations of the earth following I pray that your word will prevail in a mighty way tonight for your suit he's not looking for your tie all that is nonsense what will he do with your suit and your tie he's not even looking for your destiny he knows that anything minus the word is equal to nothing for nothing was made that was not made by him are we together now the bible says in the beginning listen carefully it didn't say in the beginning was a formula in the beginning was the word and that word was with god and that word was god he said he was with god in the beginning then he says through him all things were made and he says nothing including a destiny nothing was made that was not by him so satan knows that the making factor in men's lives is the word so when he comes to this gentleman he doesn't have any business with your tie or whatever he looks for where the word is and the bible says satan cometh immediately if satan steals the word from you you will pass him and he will pass you he has no business with you again it is the one thing that he will seek and fight for show me a man my brothers and my sisters listen very carefully no matter what satan has done in your life if the word of god can come upon you if the word of god can be understood and received and diligently applied with faith you will make nonsense out of the devil it's only a matter of time is someone getting what i'm saying because you see we have to be careful church people right now don't grow again because we are used to the religious activity of the world we come and sit down and our bibles we are writing notes that can change our lives but there is a demon of religion sitting on people many people have written their miracles in their jota and yet they remain in bondage many have written the formula for their lifting and yet it looks like heavens are closed many have written the formula for their prosperity many have written the formula that will wipe the tears of their family the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so don't get used to religion oh it's time for the word oh yeah let's judge acts chapter this we write if it's a nice word you say mm preach preacher and all those kinds of things we share the grace and people go back and nothing changes let me tell you religion is a demon it's not just a wrong philosophy i believe there is a spirit of religion that makes people hang around god but never benefit from him are we together now yes you can get so used to do i invited sister a i invited brother b and you sit down and don't get blessed yourself or i am a worker you can be standing behind the mic singing when i raise a song and the revelation that can transform your destiny comes and you sing it out of your life while you are not listening and focusing so we have to be sensitive my brothers and my sisters god is not a magician there is an exact way men are raised in this kingdom can you cry in one minute again and say i cause distraction from my life lord whatever it is that makes that i do not understand you can imagine how brilliant people are but the moment the word comes they become unfruitful to it that means it's an attack i don't believe anybody here is dull some of us academically speaking we are very sound people but the moment it comes to the issue of the word, there is an attack. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom life that we are living is a supernatural life. And it's a life that will continue to call for contention. That is the reason why you can finish an encyclopedia but not be able to read 100 pages from your Bible. What is so difficult about this thing that you cannot read is because there is a spirit behind it. I can give you a novel that is twice this page 
and some of you will finish it in one week and you don't have time it's not that you sit down and you will keep reading and within one week you are done but you pick this to read and see what happens you will it will be a miracle if you cross 10 pages of this doesn't matter what part that means there is a spirit that opens this for you it's amazing how you can sit down and open your bible and open side by side with even a christian book and you would rather read the christian book nothing is wrong with it you are reading it but just to sit and read this one raw every demon from hell will fight you because this word you see let me tell you whether you understand what he's saying or not the moment your eyes make contact with this word something starts happening to your spirit and that's the reason why when the word of god is about being taught somebody who already slept in the afternoon the spirit of slumber just comes on the person you see that as soon as the service is over he can stand behind a car and discuss politics for two hours so it was never about tiredness it was about an attack on the word you heard the testimony of the dear lady here she came and sat down as soon as praise and worship was over the fire from the praise and worship made those spirits you see evil spirits are real please let's 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 not fool ourselves let us know this world we live in we are not alone are we together that you sit down from the start to the finish of a service is a miracle it's a sign that god is doing something in your life you see people you see what happens during miracle service the moment prayers are about to offer you want to ease yourself you want to do something ah, i feel uncomfortable it's a lie it's an agitation these spirits are seeing beyond dimensions that your eyes can see so they know what is happening in the realm of the spirit as the power of god is about to be released and they will cause every discomfort some of you who drag people here to come and repent notice how well behaved they are as soon as the praise and worship starts they just say I, I, i'm tired i want to go it's a lie they are not tired the spirit that needs to be casted out you see that let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if someone invites you here and you ever get to this ground or connect it's a sign that your miracle has started because the kind of attack you try it one day and you will see that somebody who would ordinarily give you money will say sorry i don't have any money for anything just to leave kaduna and come it's an attack are we together now but you have a responsibility to refuse the will of man is respected even by demons yes sir if god respects your will then every other force on earth must respect your will if they usurp your will they manipulated you in a way that allowed them to find expression i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can't force you i can only advise you choose life you don't choose life just by verbalizing it you choose life by paying the price to sit down and do the things that minister life are we together mm -hmm. help us tonight holy spirit in the name of jesus some of you here need to go on a project just gather strategic koinonia messages that relate to certain areas in your life the media will be more than glad to help you are we together you put these teachings together and you go on a word fast let me tell you what that means you will eat there are many kinds of fasting most people only know the one that you suspend eating for 12 hours or some days but there is a way you can go on a movie fast that means you off every movie you can go on a phone fast off your phone it's, it's a way of fasting are we together and then you can have time for the word that the only thing your ear hears for a whole day is a message not somebody calling you ah how are you mm -mm. the only thing that you hear aside from bikes driving themselves out is the word of god you sit down and say lord my life must change what is the key you hear one message you hear part of the key 
it can be a message you've always had but now because you are giving god your attention fire comes from heaven and that's it you catch something you will come out of that place knowing that i've gotten this when you say it, they will laugh at you until the results bail you out please give your destiny time you heard what the dear lady said wonderful lady by the way i'm busy nobody is busy it's a lie we are looking for something nobody is busy if you're on your way going to Kaduna this night and i say hold on somebody wants to give you one million are you busy talk to me no so the idea of being busy means i have not yet come to an understanding that the word of god is profitable so please let me leave it aside while i look for the things that look profitable nobody leaves what gives you profit so if you do not have time for the word it's a revelation it's a sign that in your dealings with god you have not been quickened to a point where you have seen the value and the profitability of the word of god so you can throw away the word of god and watch film i'm, I'm not please don't get me wrong i'm not against movies but i'm telling you there is a devil out there that is demeaning the power of the word of god and we choke all kinds of things in our heads and with it spirits come create fortifications and then this is what we say because we believe that just hanging around the word of god will produce result we will get angry and say i've done everything i know to do you see that i've done everything i prayed every prayer i attended this i even fasted god is unfair it's not true everybody that gives god time must get something from him if you give me time your life will never be the same give satan time your life will never be the same one of the reasons why we never see his outstretched arm is because we don't give god time i'm busy i'm too busy i'm, I'm busy it's demonic my soul wait thou upon the lord because my brothers and my sisters all that we are looking for one visitation from god can give you something that in a lifetime you may never get preachers say it but it is true i will search for you and i will find you and i will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our heart we will live our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all our heart one more time let me just sing the song that I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my love and I will leave my voice to you in worship I will worship with all my heart I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to what I want to teach you sit with your soul your spirit your ears and listen God knows ask him that I love you with all my heart my philosophy of leadership is that you are a failed leader until the people you lead become exceptionally successful by every standard are we together now so it doesn't matter whether it's a revelation yet to me I must insist until it speaks in your life because you see the Bible says wisdom is justified by her children by her children Genesis chapter 2 Genesis 
chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you worshipping for the first time, God bless you. We we'll honor you at the end of the service. For now, let's get to the word of God. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 15. Genesis 2. Verse 15. Genesis 2. Verse 15. What is this that I see? I command that spirit to live now. I command, the Lord just showed me something. I command that spirit. You just allow me to do my madness. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is. The same, I'm seeing two people to overflow one. I command that spirit to go now. You are leading right now. This chain that has held this family is time for them to testify. I command that spirit to lead in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that spirit to lead. There is still one more person. The Lord is not allowing me to continue. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to lead. You have to go. This is Mount Zion. Shakaporosi katala hasiada. Shadabraska deketebala hasiada. You know, one of the things that happens, let me teach you something. Do you know when God opens your eyes in the spirit, you will be able to know when, let me tell you what happens. When God opens my eyes now in the spirit, I will not only see an individual sitting, I will also see the spirits connected to them. You see? Yes. And usually, because the eye is the light of the body, once there is that contact, there is an agitation in the realm of the spirit. And that's why sometimes someone can just be looking quietly and start shouting. The individual doesn't know what just transacted in the realm of the spirit. Remember the demons looked at Jesus and they saw the body of a 33 year old young man but when they looked they said ah no are you not and jesus said keep quiet so you can see beyond just an individual sitting that's what just happened now you'll be surprised now these people will come and testify and tell you for 10 years nobody has risen in our family and that's it genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 Please follow me carefully. Let's see how God will grant us grace to make progress. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, listen, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge, not a knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall thou not eat. For in the day that you eatest thereof, you will die. Now listen carefully. Jesus is giving a disclaimer here. He's giving man access to the garden. Are we together now? And he's giving man a disclaimer that in this garden there are many trees. I give you access to partake. The word eat there doesn't just mean eat alone. It means to partake of the benefits that come with that privilege. He says that there is a kind of tree that he forbids. It's amazing that even the tree that is forbidden has good. Now listen carefully. The tree has what? Yet is part of the forbidden tree. So he says this tree doesn't have evil alone. There are many good things that can come from this tree. Yet there is a reason why I forbid you from partaking. And this is the reason. That the day you eat that tree, regardless of the good it carries, that day you will die. Look up. 
The day man ate of this, did he die? In as much as we know death. Adam did not die. Eve did not die. That means he was talking about something else. In the day, not in the month. Remember until this time, he had created time and seasons. So he says in the day, the moment you partake this, death starts for you. Listen carefully. And then, in spite of the fact that it comes with good, notice the marketing system of the tree. It projects good first, then evil. Not evil and good. The character of this tree is such that when you come, you will never know there is evil on it. The system is good and evil. Even God acknowledges that the tree had good. Are we together now? Genesis chapter 3. We'll read from verse 1. Let's see to verse 7 very quickly. And then we'll have a very serious discussion tonight and pray. The Lord is giving us wisdom. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. Listen, Satan is talking now. Yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Because the woman was not there when God was telling the man, This tree has good and evil. Adam just told her that this is a tree in the midst of the garden. And so she's replying Satan now. God had said, Ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch, lest ye die. For... And the serpent said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know. So we are talking of knowledge here. Remember now. The tree of the knowledge. The tree of the knowledge. There is knowledge in the tree. The central thing there is knowledge, not fruit. Knowledge. The tree of the knowledge. Are we together now? If you have the tree of the knowledge of banana, that tree will not when you eat banana from that tree it teaches you something the tree is a lecturer the fruit in the tree can teach men certain things are you getting what i'm saying now and now he's saying that god knows that in the day remember all of this will happen in a day both the dead and this that you eat thereof the first thing is that your eyes shall be opened that means a kind of illumination will come to you and then ye shall be as what as gods knowing good and evil wow that means one characteristic feature between gods is that they have a supply of knowledge and the power to use that knowledge to produce good to produce evil are we together now that whoever can manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of good and manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of evil is no longer a man he didn't say he's the god of heaven but he said this one is not man are you getting the discussion now knowing good and evil verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was what now notice she didn't see anything evil again the tree is walking now this is how the tree works what did the woman see good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise what kind of wisdom we don't know but we know that there is wisdom in the tree she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat you see that adam was there with her next verse and truly like satan said the eyes of them both were what open 
so he didn't entirely lie he said this tree can open your eyes but he didn't say what that open eye will do and so their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sowed fig leaves and all of that and all of that now when you read all the drama that happened when God came down and said man what is happening he said this woman blah 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 just let's go to verse 11 I'll read just verse 11 and then I'll begin to teach and he said who told you that you were naked then he said hast thou because this knowledge you should not have gotten it there is no way as a man without an assistance your knowledge is limited although you are a man without sin this should not be given to you then he says have you eaten of the tree and he says I commanded you not to eat you read on and he said the woman you put the woman said the serpent and he was angry and began to curse them but something interesting happened he said man has become like one of us just follow me man has become like one of us I thought the Bible says he created man image and after his likeness now God is saying something is wrong man has become like one of us and for that we will not allow him in this state to eat of the tree of life again because if he takes of the tree of life you know the tree of life was designed to keep you living in whatever state you are so now that this guy's the whole plan has been corrupted if we allow him to eat of the tree of life then redemption will no longer be possible so let's drive him out so that it can be possible to redeem this man are we together now please sit down right from genesis we see that there is a fight for knowledge the bible tells us that the first tree listen carefully the first tree was not called the tree of the knowledge of life it was called the tree of life but the second tree walks by giving men information that it supplies you an information that gives your life good but with it eventually it destroys you are we together now Jesus there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is interwoven in this system this cosmos that we live in please listen very carefully many people like Eve have not received the miracle of understanding to discern that the trees that they continue to partake of are poisonous trees that are ministering death to their destinies and death to their lives and so my exhortation really tonight is a wake-up call to open your eyes to something very deep about the destruction that is happening to many people that they do not know they continue to die daily not as Paul said by their continual connection with this tree and that you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you understand this in the name of Jesus Christ I look at lives today as a man of God I look at people's destinies and I see certain results in their lives that I wonder how those kinds of results would have been produced are you getting what I'm saying now yes I know that these results are a product of a philosophy a product of an ideology that has been sold by a system that has been sold by a sociological context that does not honor God nor have regard for the ways of God are we together now remember the tree of life based the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the Bible tells us it is very tempting when the woman saw it there was an attraction are we together now many people's lives today have become a mess 
and has become complicated. I am almost afraid when I look at our society today and look at the level of confusion, the level of aimlessness that surrounds the lives of people. People are almost clueless about everything in life. The young and the old alike, the rich and the poor alike. And we do not know the source of this confusion. I want to show you tonight. If I can successfully show you and we pray, my assignment tonight has been fulfilled. Are we together? Colossians chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll read verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Read with me, please. Look up. One to read. Beware lest any man spoil you through what philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit after the traditions of men here's my key point and after the methodology the modus operandi the system of this world the greek word here is aeon an age and a mindset that is brought with that age that do not let the word spoiled here is plunder take advantage of do not let any man take advantage of you through philosophy through vain deceit through the traditions of men after the methodology there is a system that this world operates listen carefully there is a way and manner that has been sold humanity as a race have been scammed by a system a system that has advocated a way of life and a template of living and the bible says that compared to god's standard that template is wrong now but it's very difficult because the character of that tree is that it has good and we live in a society where we are governed by results which is an advantage for Satan because then he can project the good that comes with that system and with it he can buy the loyalty of people by the time you can prove to me that a method is working regardless of the side effects are we together now we have products right now that are 60 percent um 60 percent potent in their result and we believe that those products are enough and we sell them so we live in a world where once there is an evidence that something works, we package it and we go mainstream and we market it to people. But we do not know that that good, the Bible says, that on that is a strategy that Satan projects the good in every evil thing. No evil thing comes as evil. Even Satan comes as an angel of light. Are you getting me now so the character of evil is such that it projects the good first so that you are baited by that good like you dangle a worm attempting to catch a fish and the fish comes hoping to eat the worm not knowing that there is a hook behind are we together now and then that fish is caught up by the hook that don't let any man spoil you there is a philosophy in this world there is a philosophy in this age that when men subscribe to the bible says the side effect is that it is as though an armed bandit came to your house and plundered you the confusion that is in people's lives today on almost every subject matter is a call for concern that we must get back to understanding the disaster that is encapsulated in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now society may not agree government may not agree because there are statistics to show that the tree has good are we together now so when you tell somebody come my dear when you tell someone um give your life to jesus and throw away some of the herbal things that were used in your village this lady will prove to you how that herbal medicine healed five people are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say good shout it again say good 
and the lady would tell you she's on five points now because they said any time is time for exam rob that thing before you go to the exam hall and my goodness did it work so now that lady will not listen to your proposition to say I should throw it is it just because it has a little side effect the benefits outweigh the side effects you will say the same way you say salt one pinch of salt cannot affect a whole you know bowl of soup you don't put the same size of vegetables as you do the salt yet sometimes just for putting a little more you can completely ruin that soup that's how evil is evil does not have to be the same size with good it just has to be present sufficient enough to create an effect are you getting me now you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt are you getting what i'm saying you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt that's why the bible says, a little living a little not much a little please follow me very carefully this lady now can serve god but she will hold on to her charms because if the charms were 100 percent failed she would throw it obviously the devil knows nobody ever working with the devil has 100 percent evil no he doesn't work that way he's smart enough to know ask an robber why he's still stealing he will tell you the last stealing my god we had 11 million and that 11 million changed our life i even gave tight it looks good ask him now to stop stealing the memory of the 11 million will make sure he goes back to steal are you getting what i'm saying now evil blatantly will usually drive you away but the good component in it is what will give you the same power to remain so the bible says do not eat of that tree of good and evil there are philosophies my brothers and my sisters listen carefully there are mindsets there are belief systems that we have adopted that come with this age the bible tells us they are traceable to a tree they are traceable to a root that markets good to men and at the end destroys them thank you my dear the bible tells us again that this system that we live in has something called the wisdom of this age the wisdom of this age first corinthians chapter 2 i'm just trying to gather my scriptures before i begin to build you will be so blessed first corinthians chapter 2 paul is teaching the church in corinth and here's what he says first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and so you are not confused paul now begins to distinguish what that wisdom is that kind he says yet not the wisdom of that means this world has its own kind of wisdom wisdom by its character produces results it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom are we together now but the bible is saying there is wisdom that is not the wisdom of god it is the wisdom of this world there is even the wisdom that is the wisdom of the princes of this world hmm. but the bible says all of them come to naught what does that mean that means the end of them is death is destruction the wisdom of this world the wisdom of the princes of this world that we pride ourselves in that we build the entire philosophy of our lives the bible says that wisdom whoever walks with that dimension of knowledge doom and destruction is inevitable look at me please most of the issues in our world today are only symptoms of a bigger problem are we together 
most of the issues in our world today, the issues that we face that we, we believe are the issues that are depriving man and mankind from his dignity, most of them are only symptoms of a bigger issue. The same way someone can have headache and a doctor can say, no, this is not headache, it is malaria. The headache is a symptom of something. Meaning if you take Panadol, it may give you a temporary relief, but you are not going to be healed from that malaria until you are properly treated. We spend our time addressing symptoms. We write books about symptoms. Listen carefully. We hold conferences on symptoms and very few people are willing to go to the root and deal with the foundation that brings about this, this tragic problem of mankind. The ideas of this world have made our lives complicated. The life of the average person living in today's world is as complicated as a gadget this wisdom we have adopted like a virus they have created a web of complication they have robbed us of the simplicity of life destroyed everything about us family life has been broken down to nonsense the dignity of responsibility has been broken down to nonsense meritocracy godliness all of these virtues that build up society and advance men they had been attacked for many years and now we are seeing the effect we have enjoyed the good of that tree for a long time and right now people are beginning to see the evil you are trying to run away but the tree said you received all of me you received the advancement that i gave you you received the technology that I gave you. Are we together now? You received all of the enlightenment that I gave you. Now the other side of the equation is opening up. And the war, the crime, the decadence, and people are saying, what kind of world are we in? Not knowing that it's a fruit we ate. And now we are paying for everything. And let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that trees continue to dangle every day. If we keep eating of that tree, it will not only kill us, it will kill our children and our children's children. Mm. We have been so sucked into this system, we do not even know we are in deception. You can be so deceived and misled that you are not even aware that is deception. Under development, security issues, marital issues, financial issues, joblessness, all of these things are symptoms of subscribing to a philosophy and a way of life that is antichrist and not built on life. That tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was just a diplomatic way to say the tree of life and a tree of death. Because the end of it is death. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. As I counsel people, I am coming to the conclusion that if we do not re-examine our philosophies, there is no hope. This issue is bigger than counseling. This issue is bigger than laying on of hands. This issue is bigger than a church service or a conference. This is a deception that is institutional. And it will take people who understand the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. People who understand the ways of God to summon the courage to say, No, something is wrong. My grandfather followed this way. My father followed this way. Now a system is forcing me to follow that way. And you turn and say, no way. And receive the courage to fight to victory. The contentions that will come by your refusal to eat of that tree. Write this down. The world system 
that advocates this tree of good and evil thrives on three major things the world system that means the antichrist system of operation unfortunately that our society is built upon thrives on three things number one ungodliness ungodliness today's world our civilization today is against godliness let me explain to you what that means that means to do well in today's world it is mandatory you must act like there's no god are you getting what i'm saying now if you want to do well in today's world you have to indoctrinate yourself and culture yourself into acting as though god does not exist and the world today will applaud you that means that this babylonian system this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is strangling away god consciousness from all of us and from the fabric of society the world system thrives on godlessness that means that the more you are aligned to this world it will make you in a way and manner that you do not see value for god again by destroying every christian monument in schools for instance that can help men be aware are we together now all those things are strategies to make sure that our children the same way this little boy now does not know what a typewriter looks like that is the same way one day people will not know anything about god you will say in the beginning was the word they said is that a novel they say what do you mean is that a novel that's king james they say well i'm not aware of what you are saying that is the goal of this system that a day will come when when you say bible study it's like you are telling a child lemonade and he says what is that what is bible sir i don't know what bible is and you say it's a book that contains the words of god he said who is god we will get there if a church does if the church does not rise and listen to what i'm telling you today you have a program on tv you mention jesus or mention god they edit it but they can leave explicit words in movies even for children don't mind that rating thing they write that means something is wrong and the church is watching and we do not understand that we are being forced to eat from the tree that contains good and evil ungodliness right now this is not this is not a generation of ignorance again satan has stopped using ignorance as a strategy this generation is too enlightened to entertain ignorance so he has started marketing this good and evil it's difficult to keep someone ignorant now because this is an inquisitive generation they want to know and so satan says instead of hiding the knowledge let's not hide it again let us corrupt it and market it so knowledge is available and affordable but largely let me tell you my brothers and my sisters over 70 percent of the information that mold and make the mind of people is a babylonian information that contains good and evil are we together you hear what they teach your children in school on one side you are happy that the children are learning biology but on the other side you know you are in trouble because good and evil are you get what i'm saying now yes ungodliness we have to preserve god consciousness and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will never never preserve god consciousness when i was growing up 90 percent of our discussions were around school and god that was it right now the average young child the average teenager will talk about applications apps almost a thousand times before anything spiritual will be mentioned not god 
most young people are now spiritual and are now sociological not spiritual they are doing everything that's why they are promoting all the human activities that neutralize god consciousness like sports like music these are platforms that um that is 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 is, is very very is very very civil and so it doesn't allow the things of god are you getting what i'm saying now it's a strategy and god is waking us up on godliness number two these three of the knowledge of good and evil that makes up the world system operates by distorting spiritual patterns write it down this system operates by distorting spiritual patterns is one of the most dangerous effects of this wisdom of the world it distorts spiritual patterns i want you to listen carefully isaiah chapter 5 we'll read from verse 20 to 24. Isaiah 5 20 read with me we're reading from 20 to 24 one to read woe to them that call evil good talk to me and good evil that put darkness for light uh-huh and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter what kind of a generation is this that replaces everything is an overhaul nothing was spared if it is good this society calls it evil if it is light they call it darkness if it is sweet they call it bitter verse 22 21 woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight uh-huh woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink 23 we justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him do you know what this means that means they force you through their life and they compel you to bend until you are out of god's pattern he said they take away the righteousness of the righteous from him so you send your child to school as a responsible young boy from a christian family and a system has been built by the time that boy is three years in that school it has taken away the righteousness from the righteous four next verse therefore as fire devoured the stubble and flame consumed the chaff so shall their root be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust notice that they once blossom but the bible said it will go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the lord of hosts and despise the word of the holy one of israel in god's design and in his dealings with men he always creates patterns listen carefully god's patterns are his methodology his way of achieving his will it is not enough to obey god we must understand his pattern there is a pattern for wealth and finance in the kingdom there is a pattern for marriage in the kingdom there is a pattern for ministry there is a pattern for success but now we have a system that is forcing an ideology and even upon believers that makes us to violate patterns are we together now one of our dear ladies here she may be following online i think a few a few maybe about a month ago she left for the u.s and when she got to the u.s i think it was just like a few days or a week she just called me and i know there are people from u.s following so i, I, I don't mean to insult any culture but she told me that apostle there's there's something wrong she said my roommates are all lesbians and there is a problem if i'm not mistaken i hope i'm right because she said it's like they are supposed to be believers and now she has to relate with them because there is not like here just for showing any sign of 
um, discrimination as it were they can sue you and of course if you are not not a citizen of that nation they can take you out immediately and this lady was confused completely confused and saying what is all this I come from a place in Zaria where even the person who is not doing well can be a pastor somewhere else and now I'm faced with roommates that are vocally part of a system let me tell you I don't mean to insult anyone but I told you most of those things are symptoms of a problem the problem is that we have deviated from God's pattern are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. The divorce rate in marriages is something that is scary, including Christian marriages. One out of every two marriages will not last 10 years. Now, please don't feel bad if anything has happened to your marriage. I'm teaching here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why? Because two of you come, husband and wife, people have created their own patterns. Call good evil and evil good it was God who defined how marriage works society has now mentored people into creating their own laws about marriage is it not arrogant for you to come and meet something and not consult the person who created it and change the laws it's like coming to my house and meet my tap running and I come back and see that you've rewired the tap to the back of the house by what authority did you do this? In my house? So we have done it in ways that we cannot imagine. In my, my laptop, I have the photo of a woman who married Sardine. Big Sardine, not the small one you use. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? Side by side, you see them there. I have it in my laptop. Now, let me tell you this. Believers who are civilized people. I'm not, I'm not those kind of people that will teach you to not, not, no, no, no. But I'm saying something is wrong. We have to admit that something is wrong. Are we together now? These people have their ideas. They have money. They have everything. Yet the marriage does not work. And they are wondering because everybody the Babylonian system has indoctrinated this lady you are not under any man you are a lady you are you know you are a wonderful person don't let any man look down on you society is these men are looking down on women this and that and the lady says yes if it's because of your money I will get my own job I will buy my own car I can be lord of myself if you drive me I can go and get my three bedroom flat we think it's a nice thing because if a lady proposes this in the world they clap for you they stand up and wave their hands and God sits on his throne and says, this is not what I designed what are you designing like this already as I'm saying it you see how surprised me how many of you have been sucked into it as I'm saying it now it's paining you which is a sign that God is delivering you because already you can see how the thing has sucked us and then the men we have our own we are even the ones that are more sucked into this thing because we need money we need to provide and we have deviated from God's pattern completely right now respect in marriage is based on who is richer not what God said I'm working I'm earning 30,000 you are earning 10,000 you are not worth my respect and society says yes one one life coach somewhere who is not born again has never read the bible is now writing books and pushing it to the church because they know we buy everything are we together yes something is wrong a distortion of patterns let me tell you why patterns are important because patterns forerun the glory when patterns are violated the glory will never be seen never be seen there are ways today my brothers and my sisters i don't say this in any sarcastic way but there are ways go for pastors conferences and see how they teach men to raise money to run churches you will be amazed and you will be surprised because there is a pattern a Babylonian system is marketing a strategy. Remember that the ark of God was supposed to be carried by a formula. 
a man decided to invent a system to say let's let's make it easier for men and that man died what did he do that was wrong he only changed patterns it was violation of pattern that made a man lose his throne Saul in the Bible it was not in his office to offer sacrifices but because Samuel was wasting time and the people started putting pressure on Saul Saul said what nonsense is this priesthood thing get me everything let me offer sacrifices as soon as he offered sacrifices Samuel came and said what have you done he said you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this and God would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this your throne is taken away from you and Samuel tried to weep and cry and God who is full of mercy said how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king in other words this guy is out of my program God your God every time the reason why we never see the glory of God in our churches we never see the glory of God in our families could it be that we are there eating of the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil and is indoctrinating us to act and believe in ways that are violating God's pattern Gideon began to cry and told the angel he said why do we not see the miracles that our fathers told us and he began to tell Gideon there are idols there are things to be destroyed when it was time for Elijah to command fire from heaven he didn't just say fire come he said set me 12 altars there is a pattern set me 12 altars put water on it put this and fire came Cain and Abel offered sacrifices. One was accepted. One was rejected. God is not only the God of the heavens. He's a God of patterns. God looks at how you did it. Not just that you did it. Hmm. Patterns. Thank you, my dear. Exodus chapter 25. We'll read verse 9 and then we'll read verse 20. Very quickly, please. God is taking us somewhere tonight. According to all that I showed thee, listen, after the pattern of the tabernacle, this was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and God was instructing Moses that according to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, so shall thou make it in other words it was not Moses's idea a blueprint was given his assignment was to replicate it there are many things see in your dealing with God you will not need too much of creativity you will need obedience it is when you are executing his will on earth that you will need in your dealing with God there are few things that will be your idea I know we don't like this how you know you are working with God is that a major part of your dealing is yes sir yes sir when it becomes in my opinion that's not God you are working with hmm. creativity is not for the secret place creativity is a system of dominion you don't bring creativity when you are in the secret place it is obedience it is your heart opening to say Lord not my will but your will be done Exodus 25 25 verse 40 and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was shown you not which you guessed not which you guessed a pattern was shown you make sure that you make it after their pattern very quickly give us chapter 40 and verse 16 40 and verse 16 I'm showing you that God is a God of patterns 40 and verse 16 read with me please one to read thus did Moses uh -huh, according to all that the Lord commanded him go to verse 33 we are reading now verse 33 to 35 he says and he read up the court he's about to finish now listen carefully round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate read the last sentence everyone one to go so Moses finished the work he finished everything according to pattern next verse and then a cloud 
covered the tent of the congregation God supervised until he followed the patterns to the dot when Moses finished the work he said God I finished God said I'm ready to come the cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle next verse and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation why because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled it if the glory of God is not upon your church could there be an explanation that something in the building or the system of that church is disaligned with divine patterns because if it is built according to pattern the glory of God is like a stamp you obeyed to the latter if I look at your family and I do not see the glory of God there is a pattern that you are not following are we together now I can look at your family and I see chaos here and there husband beating wife wife beating husband I must kill you I tell you someone is violating patterns if both people walk with divine patterns there will be glory that means the glory of God is also a confirmation that his patterns have been duly followed every time you finish that which you do it's important to look around and find out where is the glory of God in it as proof that this was done according to pattern could it be that the joblessness that is plaguing young people in Nigeria could it be the reason why many of us are languishing in certain intense levels of hardship we may be well-meaning but could it be that we are violating divine patterns everybody say patterns say it again say patterns so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil causes you to be distorted from God's pattern there is a way God designed that marriage happens if you have to go on Facebook and WhatsApp to start doing this you may get a beast who is first a man before he becomes a beast which is consistent with the way that tree works is first good before evil so you meet somebody on Facebook and he says I'll go and see your parents you are the lily of the valley are we together now and that person later becomes the beast of your destiny why because patterns God designed marriage come please to be one man and one woman don't feel bad by the time this guy says one woman is not enough and brings another woman everybody say patterns patterns start fighting from the realm of the spirit because the way God designed this thing is such that one woman the woman has to be alone for you to see the best of her in marriage by the time it is now two or ten or five something must go wrong it doesn't matter what they sign patterns have been distorted are we together when a man of 50 years old is writing wayek everybody say patterns have been distorted now listen i'm not i'm not being sarcastic i'm saying that it is usual for that man to not concentrate he is not supposed to be that alert and focused just like that because that longevity of time has accommodated too many things that are more serious than the subject matter so it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth lamentation chapter 3 that god says young men walk your walks while it is day night will come when you cannot walk is a pattern starting early in life is a pattern that's why when the spirit of delay comes upon a family it makes sure that the first person is in is writing ssc at 25 it's not about delay satan is doing everything to make you go out of pattern it is why god in his mercy introduced a mystery called restoration are you seeing that now restoration is doing something to your life to bring you back in pattern
when a woman has been barren and she's 60 years old with no child the devil knows that according to the normal course of life there will be a problem giving birth or at least giving birth to a very healthy child are you seeing that now satan knows that god is a god of patterns and so he supplies us knowledge that makes us to be and act in ways that continue to be defiant to God's pattern because his advantage in our life is that when we are out of pattern he doesn't need to pray against us the glory was designed to locate patterns and confirm it is God speaking to us I'd like you to look at your family as you are sitting down and suddenly realize that could this be why we never saw the hand of God in our family we were Christians oh my father my mother loved God served God with all his and her heart Lord why is this family this way why are we not seeing your glory I'm showing you we are eating of a tree and the more we keep eating of that tree every time the glory comes to your house it cannot rest and the glory continues to search for a resting place and sometimes it will wait for one full generation until you arrive that's why some of you are standing up to say lord that glory must rest that glory has been hovering around my family since 1951 and nobody has aligned enough to allow that glory come lord see he said lord and now arise oh lord he said come to your resting place until then god said i don't have a place to rest and solomon said no way we have to make for you make for you a place i can tell you i understand a bit about the glory of god i know why many people do not experience the glory there are spiritual patterns. Babylon. You eat of that tree. Notice what happened to Adam. As soon as they ate of the tree, what happened? The glory lifted. It was the glory that covered them. They didn't even know whether they were naked or not. They didn't need clothes because the Shekinah of God covered them. As soon as they ate of that tree, imagine that every day you are eating of that tree think of what is happening to your life and think of what you are programming for your children's children already so every time our fathers kept bowing in that shrine they thought they were just paying homage but something Ichabod the glory continued to move back and back and back and back and back by the time you came to the scene there was no glory again 11 ladies beautiful ladies no man to marry them 13 ladies no child let me tell you my brothers and my sisters it's not just about prayer when we return to the pattern is with a rush the glory will come when moses finished not when he started god kept watching finish it and let my glory come you know from my paternal side i never saw any blessed person i think the most blessed person was my dad and it's not like he was any blessing i said what kind of course is this how can you be so hard working and love god my father was a very honest man loved god but i, I said no no someone has to be angry oh this night and say no my family has been eating from a tree eating from the tree can mean bowing to an idol eating from the tree can be an indoctrination that your salary is where your wealth is you think it's a nice statement but it's something that has been sold to you so when you hear things like all blessings come from god they only pass through men it's an ideology that fights everything you've been taught about job oh the boss said i can waste your life now and you say sir it's true Ah, and the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I'm not confused. I know where my help comes from. Who is an arrogant man born of a woman that sits on a chair and says he will frustrate you? When there is God. An average man of God has been taught now that there are things that if they are not in your church members will not come please don't get me wrong 
I don't if there's any man of God following I'm, I'm an excellent person but right now we are doing a lot of nonsense that will not help us see the glory of God nonsense members can drink tea they can eat rice they can eat yam and go because there is a pattern and I if I be lifted that's the pattern I will Paul may plant Apollos may water but it's not given to men to bring increase increase is a mystery that only the Lord of the harvest knows the formula you say something now people insult you and say you are arrogant but the result is not showing I want you tonight to start thinking the convictions that I hold where did it come from where did it come from there are many well-behaved ladies in this place you started very well with God until you read a book until you joined some group of friends who told you blast gentlemen don't talk anybody that talks just give it to them don't be doing like a mumu girl men are not like that I say eh, that's how it works you ate something and from that day your glory went away and the kind of men who would ordinarily come you find out that men increase but it's all nonsense kind of men men that you cannot carry to your parents something a pattern has gone wrong the one factor that was the reason why the glory of God was on you the devil now came and lied to you why be respect yourself be a well-behaved girl be all let me tell you if you act like you're a mumu naive girl men will not come and you say okay i must reinvent myself to be a happening lady and that was the day your destiny helper went away there are many pastors some of you here have come here for impartation let me tell you i submit to you i am a student of patterns there are things that i know i found them God taught me. I said, Lord, I will never bend to them. Years ago, I remember saying some things and I was insulted. I was criticized because of it. I said things about the glory of God. I said things about increase. And I said, the way we are going, if people do not understand these things, they will pay for it. People laughed at me. And today is unfortunate for many people. People see some of the results that God is producing. It's not a charm. It's patterns. When a pattern is complete. Listen to me. My sister, you may come from a family where nobody knows you. Stay with God's pattern. Let his glory rest on you. You will join people to wonder and say, God, what, what am I doing? And God says, I'm the God of patterns. Man of God, follow God's pattern for ministry and you will be afraid of what God will do through your life. We like cutting corners. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. I want a ministry, but I want it now. I want power, but I want it fast. I want this, but I want it now. And we find out that somewhere along the line, the patterns are distorted. And we never see the power of God. Are we together? You do what I'm telling you now to do and see how society will laugh at you. Because we have trained people that the more godless we are, the more happening they are. You see that? So this gentleman now is in the house and somebody advises him, don't give your wife money because if you give her money, she will not respect you. That's what is in vogue now. A demonic pattern. Because loyalty and submission was supposed to be by revelation, not manipulation. Now the man is manipulating the woman. And one day her own Ahitophel too will advise her. And as soon as he advises her, she will get a job and start a business and arrest the husband to prove to him that I am the man in the house. My brothers and my sisters, we are in trouble if we don't return to pattern. Yes. Many marriages do not work because the men are not under authority. You've heard me say it. I have read a lot of books about marriage and I respect it. 
but I submit to you that many of the books are dealing with symptoms. Do you know, just for a man not having the fear of God, there are hundred problems that can arise from that relationship. Now, you can write a book to solve those various hundred problems, but the root cause is that this man is not saved, period. When a man is not saved, the tendencies that can come are infinite. When a man is not under authority, he can beat the living daylight out of this woman and say, who cares? I'm the Lord of my life. I don't listen to no man. The arrogance of Nebuchadnezzar. It's a pattern. Why do doctors specialize? Why do they look at certain sicknesses and they can show you immediately because the sicknesses have patterns? Malaria has a pattern. Typhoid has a pattern. A doctor can do this, just do a quick examination and say, wow, quickly, you need to see a consultant. Something is wrong. Without the patterns, they have been taught to identify patterns. That's it. There is a pattern that gives you wealth in this kingdom. Many believers will not listen. The world has its own system. It will work, but wait to see what it will give you later on. It will give you high blood pressure. You will be a liar. You will be a thief. You will destroy your life. Destroy the integrity of your family. So two of us, come, Sheung. Two of us can stand right now. And I have, I have some money here. I have 1,000 naira. Watch this. He got his one. Hold your own. Hold it high. He's old, he got his 1,000 by a Babylonian system. And I got my 1,000 from a kingdom system. You would think that two of us are holding 1,000. No. He's holding 1,000 minus five years gone in his life. That's why the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added. That means there is a kind of blessing that adds too. If the blessing of the Lord adds not... That means there is a type that you can get, but with it you will get this. That's what happened to many of our parents. By the time they are 55 years, he found out that because of Horsley and the way he pushed like that, he's about to retire, but he's not hearing again. Come on to me, Jesus. Let's listen to him now. Let's listen to Jesus. Come on to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. He promises that he will give you rest. This is what many people can kill for. Look at this. This thing you see. Many people have left God because of it. Many people are going to hell fire because of it. Yet they never find it. And God tells you, look, there is a way I can give you this such that you will serve me. And the world says, the way I give you this is... The, the more you denounce Jesus, the more I give it to you. So you keep saying, Jesus, I don't love you. And Mammon says, that's how it works. By the time you have plenty of this, you have not only left the cross, you have left everything God. So when you come and say, I can have this and yet have Jesus, Babylon says, you are joking. But this is what God is training you into doing. That you can have this and if God says let it go, you drop it. Because you are aware that this is not your true value. Your true value is Christ. We must return tonight to patterns. Otherwise we are going to suffer. Remember that every result is governed by something. That something is a pattern. The result you get is brought by the glory of God. I've seen a little bit of the glory of God and I know when a man has found a pattern for the glory give up on that man if you want to try to take the glory in that area you are wasting your time for as long as the pattern is kept the glory will always always without fail tomorrow I'm in Lagos preaching at a conference and I know that their lives will never be the same because there is a pattern it's not because I'm Joshua Selman ah, Elijah said bring me 12 stones I know how to make fire come from heaven 
man of God you are not a blessing to your members if you do not understand the pattern that brings the hand of God there is a pattern that men do on earth that brings favor there is a pattern that brings speed there is a pattern that brings the anointing I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord I was glad there is something in the house of the Lord that changes the lives of people but today we are eating trees that make the things of God do you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil teaches you that it is in the abundance of hustling you prosper have you had those teachings and have you seen people write books on them have you not read in your bible that except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it the world will laugh at you for saying that have you not read again that the lord said except he watches over a city he says that the watchmen watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night does that look like somebody's life that you know wake up in the morning sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said but he gives his beloved sleep And you see, when you struggle and it does not work, you will be angry at those who are getting it easy because patterns are supposed to create spiritual ease. So you can step into a place and gyrate like a herbalist. The power of God will fall. It is going to fall. And you keep looking at the ladies and nobody is shouting and you are angry. What is no, no sister shouting? And yet, someone comes with the ark and knows how to put 12 stones together. And all of a sudden, you are hosting a dimension of glory. And you stand and watch and say, how are these people doing it? He has to be the devil. No, sir. Patterns. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I everybody is doing just listen to me and follow me I was stupid enough to follow Lord where do I go this way Lord where do I go I remember when the Lord told me put koinonia messages the audio put it on your Facebook page and let it go Lord what is that many ministries raise their money to run the church primarily through the media arm the media arm of every ministry is one of the major ways that God blesses them with. Lord, if you are doing that, how then are you going to bless the ministry? But Lord, how do you put a message on Facebook and then you said you will give it wings? The patterns of God. He uses the foolish things. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. A lady was talking to me that she was somewhere, one of our ladies, she used to be in the worship team, that she was somewhere on Kekena Pep and the person on Kekena Pep was playing my message. This was in, I think it was in Wari or so or Bielsa. Now, that one is no more advertisement. There is a finger. When you see results that are produced by patterns, you will know that this one is God. The pride of our generation 
will never allow us to humble ourselves and say Lord I don't know I don't know many young people do not know how to succeed and they will never go to God they will consult with all kinds of equally proud people like them and come up with all kinds of formula that is not consistent with the ways of God that formula may have worked in 1970 but I guarantee it will not work in today's world listen young people in Nigeria we need to receive the formula for our advancement because computers have, re have replaced men a day will come when almost everything will be done by computers I don't know what the employment issue will be but there is there is a system in this kingdom when there was famine only two sets of people were spared the king and the prophet the king and the prophet did not go through famine any other person in between suffered the squalor of it Alabara. You are the mighty God, and you are so with you. You are the glorious Alamara. There are people who will tell you about our teachings that they can stand and sit strangers i shared with you the testimony of a gentleman that bought flash new flash in the case flash drive bought a new flash drive in the case like that given to him the gentleman opened it went to slot it in his laptop and there was koinonia messages brand new flash because it's not men that market this thing they are spirits Ask Jacob in the house of Laban. Do you not see that there was a pattern that made Laban left for three days? How many days? Three days. He came back after three days and saw that his cattle had changed in three days. Do animals get pregnant in three days? But a spiritual pattern was downloaded to the earth realm and things change. That means there is something we can receive from heaven remember our popular scripture in this ministry knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth there is a pattern my brothers and my sisters listen to me i want you to be careful what everybody calls the way did you hear what i said don't be afraid of being controversial be careful what everybody says is the way this is how people make it in life this is how people marry these days no sir many of our young children have been destroyed right now in churches because in a bid to create a western or a 21st century context we are robbing these young children of the quality of knowing god look at islam they have not changed their pattern the way they train children regardless whether it's in saudi arabia or whatever the pattern is the same they know the potency of that formula is god speaking to us let me give us one more and then we'll pray is god speaking to someone tonight so if i am not seeing the glory of god in my life the explanation tonight is that there could be that i am eating I am partaking of an information that may be mainstream it may be popular when I talk to this my adorable gentlemen they are absolutely great people they are going very far you see that yes they are going very far but you see there is a pattern that people believe if you follow you will rise fast believe me it is nonsense any pattern that is not consistent with God's word will not take you far. It will throw you up and crash you down. That's why you see people rise and shine for two years. And then they say their time has come and gone. But is that what your Bible says? Doesn't it say that the path of the just, talk to me, is as a shining light. So what is this up today and down tomorrow? Because there is a pattern. If you have to put money in my pocket 
and bribe my way to making the world know you your success is at the mercy of my loving you the day i don't love you you are in trouble but when god is the one who leads you you will be surprised when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you for five years and they will tell her there's one man is in our village he has the gift he has the gift all you need to do he has the gift and the woman says no i know god's pattern i know that that tree carries good so it's possible to go there and have a child but something will come with that child will come the trouble in your family and then the woman stays and uses her faith and the day God is ready to visit her, God will not give her a child. The woman will carry t triplets, one child being equivalent to ten children. You know that there are people who alone, they are equivalent to a nation. They give birth to one child. Because of that one child, somebody you have been trying to see for years comes to visit you. Five people get a job because a child was born. Is that a child? A child that does what a CEO cannot do. A destiny helper from birth. One week from birth is already a destiny helper. And as adult as we are, we couldn't help ourselves. A child helps us. That's not a child. That's a miracle. That's a breakthrough. Number three. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil thrives on self-centeredness i want you to listen to my message christ-centeredness i preached it i think earlier this year the language i i wanted my way my way is the language of babylon my way is proof you are eating of that tree men who eat of that tree have a way they talk it must be my way listen listen oh generation of young people let's listen my way my formula we live in a generation right now where there is an obsession for having things happen our way i want it my way and we take it a step further to force others to also do it our way that's the height of selfishness now most great relationships are destroyed because of the i factor myself i want it my way it has to be as it pleases me unfortunately when you come to the kingdom you learn that the more i goes down the more glory rises and i jesus if i be lifted up not you john said that i will decrease not just him that self i decreases and that you increase james chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 self-centeredness is one of the biggest tragedies of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil james chapter 3 Give us 14 and 15. The Bible says something very instructive. It says, listen, but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. 15. It says this wisdom. So there is a wisdom that is as a result of self and greed and bitterness my selfishness and my greed can make me act in a way that looks like wisdom but the motivation 
Are we together now? The motivation for that wisdom is bitterness, self-centeredness. The Bible says that kind of wisdom descended not from above. Remember the knowledge of the good of good and evil. It says, but is earthly, is sensual, and is devilish. So simply because I want to be the one to shine, I can say, Sam, um, because there is a gun inside that room, I say, Sam, why don't you go to that room and go and help me carry a basket? But the goal is so that he will be implicated, so that he will get out of the way for me to shine alone. It looks like wisdom, but the motivation is self-centeredness. The Bible says that wisdom is devilish. Our world today, and sadly, even in ministry, is full of self-centeredness. Romans chapter 16, quickly please. Verse 17 and 18. While I was studying this, I found this scripture and it blessed me. Tonight is a very strong admonishment and I want you to listen carefully. 16 and 17. Okay. Read with me. One, two, go. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause what? Division and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what avoid them next verse for they are such that serve not our lord jesus but they are and by good words and fair speeches they deceive the heart of the simple your bible So I can be looking for money and I can say, do you know what? Um, the Lord gave me a prophetic instruction that all of us are going to do this and that and that. All of us are going to raise two 2,000 and come and touch my shoe and your life will change. And God knows he didn't give that instruction. I just calculated that if there are 5,000 people here and everybody gives two 2,000, highest plus or minus i've already done the mathematics and then i come and say oh god said no their belly is their god their belly a man's belly can be his god meaning you can serve your stomach it's amazing what people do so that they can feel satisfied and don't care the effect on others and on the kingdom that's why people can kill i can look at this gentleman and plot with an assassin look at this these touts around that steal phones and do all of that they can come and cut someone's hand cut someone's neck to collect a phone of twenty-five thousand and go and sell it five thousand that is self-centeredness at work the amount it would take for that victim to treat himself or herself may even be more than what they sold that phone for. But because they need to smoke now, everybody, even if it means death, listen, the moment the comfort of people does not become a factor for your consideration in your desire, you are self-centered. I want this it must be my way brothers we want this I'm the man of the house it must be my way I stamp it ladies I'm the woman of the house I'm not the one that married you you are the one that married me it must be my way and the naughty children come I'm not the one I gave her to this them to they say their own selfishness I wish you who Jesus himself stripped himself of his glory and came to the earth for God so loved, not himself, for God so loved the world. I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Selfishness. Lord, bless me so that everybody in my family will know that I'm not a small man. 
my elder brother who is shouting Lord bless me let me disgrace somebody for you and God says me what do you think I am your mate God sees my heart and I stand before you I say this I don't know how many things I do in my life considering myself as the chief benefactor God is my witness there are things I do for people today that I sit down sometimes and I think and I say Kai you man now I, I talk to myself I said now for you Joshua Selman when you do not have a heart for God and people you are eating of the tree of life of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life takes the attention from you to others are we together now as a preacher if your whole church is around you what you can get from members how they can clap for you then that means you're in trouble let me tell you true ministry is not about the preacher it's about the blessed people that God brings so that they are raised so that they are equipped so that their lives are blessed I sit down here many times and I fight tears when I see people stand to testify about the marvelous things that the Word of God did for them listen I have found out that there are not many things that are important in life did you hear what I said I have found out that if you walk with God's ways there are not many things in your entire lifetime that are really important the complications that come that our lives bring are a web that the Babylonian system created for us so we have depression go to the village you will hardly find people with high blood pressure for some of them is because they are not enlightened but for some of them through the wisdom of the ancient they know the things that really matter did you know that when all is said and done in this life there are not many things that are important as busy as we are six o'clock in the morning we're on our way going 12 o'clock we are on our way going we do this and kill ourselves trying to eat trying to gain relevance I must buy the suit of 200,000 so that they will know and that self-inflicted pain leads you to do things that you have no business doing the moment you buy the 200,000 naira suit the person you want to wear it for you hear that they've made the person a senator and you feel stupid for laboring for one year to prove a point listen I have seen people who died trying to impress others I've seen people who died trying to create something in their life that it was not part of God's template for them meet a man on a deathbed right now and tell him what do you desperately want he will not say an estate he will not say I need an extra wife he will not say I need a male fast the only thing he will cry for is give me more time that means time is the most valuable thing and if God ever gives you time you have everything but we can waste time to look for what is less than time God gave you time to serve him time to love him time to seek him we were on our way going to um, I think it was while we we're going to movie while we we're going to the airport I was talking to my people and I told them I said guys do you know that this you people think that you have forced me to buy has reduced my productivity by at least 10 percent and they were amazed I said I don't have a problem with it but um, you can sit down with somebody for 20 minutes and not even ask him his name because someone else is talking to you 
and the person who is talking to you can even have gone to be with the Lord yet he's talking to you and somebody that is alive that can help you now you see that everybody people have had accidents typing text while driving people have done all kinds of things you see someone stand by the roadside shouting alone and just nodding with the ear please. these things are turning us into fools we have to remind ourselves that we are the highest of God's creation I'm not against excellence don't get me wrong but something is critically wrong that we must trust God for it's a mind control system is controlling us right now when you stand people look at you and they look at the phone you are holding they see one kind of thing they say okay you can stay there that's a society that is depraved of the formula so it puts pressure someone who is busy saving money for something is under pressure let me carry this there are some you i i thank god because it doesn't allow me to read the prayer items of miracle service I'm sure I would have edited some before presenting them to God. I said, this is nonsense. God, please don't waste your time. There's a crucial issue here. Someone is dying. Leave this iPhone issue and kill the person dying. So I can go to the place of prayer and spend three hours. And that three hours is not because I love God and his purposes. The three hours is because I'm manipulating the hand of God to meet my need. Oh God, if you give me a good job and you give me an iPhone, Lord, you too, you know you'll be glorified. And God says, how? How? Present your course. There's no problem. How will I be glorified? I said, well, Lord, they will respect me. And say, have you, have you found out how many times you mentioned your name in that equation? I said, no. I'm not a careless God. I don't waste and yet another person is doggedly involved and said lord i know there is nothing that i have that is not yours and while he's talking god is telling someone give him the latest iphone every year he said god i don't need it he said me i want you to need it that's god for you it's amazing how god can take someone else's prayer request and give another person who really seeks him please when you go to the secret place don't waste your time learn how to get God's heart nobody comes with his heart without his hands if you invite my heart my hand will follow if you invite my hand I can keep my heart far while my hand goes get his heart and you will see what his hand will do is the hand that will remove the heart and put it for you but with that heart will come more than you have ever imagined I see God do things in my life and I see God do things in this ministry that sometimes okay. this God ba, I want you to believe him I will never bow to Babylon it's a corrupted system I have seen the fallacy of this system they are arrogant even one hour to their destruction they will still be arrogant they have deceived many people today the Babylonian system has made many people to go to hell. Are you aware of that? There are people who would have been on their way to heaven, but a system deceived them. They deceived many of our parents to not love God. They embraced education, but they left God. Believing that they will be on their job forever, they forgot that demons are still on earth. While they were promoted, their inability to be connected to God didn't give them the opportunity to make exploits and their lives are almost miserable today young people lie to themselves if you take this and smoke this you are a man and it sells a system and you embrace it let me tell you I introduce to you once again a system that is superior maybe controversial for a while but the results are like day and night. You will rise above men, men and watch life in wonder. Yes, it's true. I've made my choice. I really have. I'm not going to run my life based on a depraved system that has no respect for God. I will not make money at the expense of my relationship with God. No, sir. That is devilish. Money and God are not the same. I will never allow any pre-
brilliant financial expert make me believe money and God is the same no in the beginning God not dollars in the beginning God not Naira in the beginning God not NMPC in the beginning God not APU in the beginning God and he says he's Omega too so whatever happens in between I'm sure that he's still there I live a very happy life truly speaking and I live a very peaceful life do you know why because I have learned in my life there are very finite things I'm doing with my entire life the things I'm doing with my life they are not many these are the things I live for these are the things my entire course on earth will be for I don't have time to waste on nonsense there's no time wasting to prove any point high blood pressure if they tell you I have high blood pressure well pray for me but I don't think it's true I sleep like a baby I wake up happily this is the day the Lord has made I rejoice and I am glad in it wake up tomorrow morning and stand by the road and see the anger of people he's alone nobody's on the road yet he's already angry honing alone and angry this wicked world why is life like this and God says come up to me say no God stay out of my life and others even say it's because you came into my life have you heard people say that if the devil ever puts that thought in your mind my brothers and my sisters cast it that is because God came into my life that's why I'm not lifted if it was not this God thing I would have quietly bribed my way I would have been in NMPC now and people regret and make it look like God you are a disadvantage Bazankoma Bazankoma Nina yes Bazankoma based on your own convictions if you don't fear God you can't make your children fear God they will fear what you fear you fear money you will raise your children like that whatever you serve is what they will serve you say as for me and my house as for me and my house I've made a choice I want you to join me make this choice make this choice as for me money will not stand between me and God fame will not stand between me and God this devilish system it doesn't mean we should run away from the world we cannot we are in the world but there is another philosophy listen we are praying in the world Sam come if Sam offends me the world teaches that Sam has offended you an eye for an eye make sure you do something that bends him so that he will know but when you come into the kingdom it says to even pray for those who despitefully use you now you do that let me tell you what the world calls you mumu that's the name that's the name invented for those who obey god that far when you obey god that far the world created a name for you everybody will be taking you for a ride you are doing like an idiot revenge and bible says vengeance is mine and you are thinking do i do i do something for sam David had the opportunity to kill Saul and he left Saul. And, ah, David, yes, your chance. David said, it doesn't work that way. There is a pattern. It is God that lifts. If I lift myself, I will keep myself in the palace. Give. That's the pattern of the kingdom. The wall says, take, search his pocket, remove everything and make it your own. That's how you rise. And that's the way many of us have taught. You can inflate school fees. Daddy, they've increased our school fees to 120,000. Print some letters that are a lie. And they give you, and you say, smartness. That's what the world calls it. In this kingdom, we call it death. Because God's system of justice will catch up with you for sure. Are we together? We are going to pray. Tonight is a wake-up call. 
that you should stop eating from the tree although it looks like it has good there is a more excellent way the tree of life an ideology and a proposition that is superior by far you will live long and live happy you will give and people will think you're a madman yet you are happy because you understand the system that your children surround your table they don't run away from you like you ran away from your parents they come to you and love you that you can lock your house morning till night with your family members and say today we are worshiping God in this family not no time no time I need to make ends meet I need sharp sharp I need money there's one money somewhere and God is saying settle down God no 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 My, the, the person has called me to come now I need to come a man can receive nothing intelligent people hear me on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him I am aware that I'm not very smart in myself I've given up on my own intelligence outside of God that's why I need him like a matter of life and death and I say Lord if you do not speak my intelligence is too frail to give me the results that I seek these are the kinds of people that he loves when people stand and say apostle joshua selman i remember that in this kingdom there is only one person who is glorified it is in his being glorified that you are also lifted and then i turn i say lord jesus this is unto you and they say no shine i say no we shine by letting him shine then he reflects his light on us that's how we get our own we don't shine and turn our backs at him say lord i have brought you this as a trophy and he says you are doing this for me then I will lift you men of God be careful when men begin to clap for you and say without you the world will not move without koinonia you cannot rise I mean come with or without me God's sovereignty remains with or without me his kingdom and his purposes will continue if i die today you will only cry for seven days you will first try to raise me back if i don't refuse to wake up you will throw me you will pray and pray and be tired and one by one you will start going and throw me in a grave and cry one last time and i tell you that will be it you will think your life will not continue i will stand and i'm watching you with the angels and say bury that body and go <laughs> I want you to live a superior life a life that is free from fear if I fail what happens if I fail hey oh, if I don't marry what happens if I don't have children no to deliver them who through the fear of death fear have all their lifetime subject to bondage if you want to buy a car today the reason should not be to prove a point Lord I need it for the comfort of my life for my family ultimately for your kingdom and God says pattern complied let the car come Lord I need it how my colleagues have car this small boy that was in SS1 when I was writing work and God said SS1 I was 33 years old when I saved the world I saved those who were also 70 years so if you are using age that carnality in you God will not prosper you and you will sit down there and say my colleagues and their children will come and be feeding you what if you say Lord is for your glory and I've taught you how you know God is being glorified in your life whoever takes the shame is the one who has been taking the glory did you hear what I said whoever takes the shame God cannot be taking the glory while you take the shame many of us are so shame conscious we got it from our cultures shame shame Ah, let him take the glory and let him take the shame is his namesake is defending not my namesake you enter your sabbath lord is for your glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my one more
more time. Sing it. For your glory, I will do. Gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. You have tried hustling. Why don't you try a retreat? Try it. Try it. You have tried running around. Why don't you get back and say, Lord, here is my certificate. Whatever you do with it, do all. I'm tired of applying. Every job I applied, they didn't give me. I bring my certificate to the secret place and I kneel before you. Am I not all yours? Is the certificate not yours? And you lie down there and then you have a dream and you see someone giving you a job. And God says, this one, I am the one giving you. I took my hand to show you it's not by the arm of flesh. I am the lifter of men. I don't know how many times I would drum this revelation. There is nobody who is self-made in the kingdom. The idea of being self-made is a secular idea. Everybody is spirit-made. Everybody is God-made. Everybody is word-made. And nothing was made without him. I am self-made is a joke. Of course, when you are talking to secular people, it's okay. But in this kingdom, no self-made preachers. No self-made marriages. No self-made wives. Oh, I was beautiful. That's why he married me. He's a lie. I'm a handsome guy working in an NPC. No, sir. Everything in this kingdom is God. The epicenter of the kingdom is Christ. Are you ready to pray? I've shown you three things that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil can do. Listen, it will destroy your home. It will destroy your life. There is a more excellent way. It's the way of the spirit. It's a more excellent way. It's the way of peace. Many of us have joy, but we do not have peace. Can I tell you, peace is better than joy by far. If you have the option to choose between peace and joy, choose peace 1,000 times before you choose joy once. You have nothing in life if you do not have peace. True wealth is peace. True progress is peace. He never calls himself the prince of joy, but he calls himself the prince of peace. Rise up on your feet. Na kima wasu nanka kubangi ji na donga kasu nanka kubangi ji kai saya na kima wasu nanka kubangi ji to lift your voice and say as for me and my family and my children's children we will follow the way of the Lord lift your voice and pray I choose to eat of the tree of life it's a choice I'm making I choose it on behalf of my ministry I choose it on behalf of myself I make up my mind that the way of the Lord is my way the way of the Lord is my way
Bible says, I beseech thee, brethren, he's talking to believers, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, he says, holy and acceptable unto God, and he calls it your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed. Do not pattern your life after this world, the Greek word aeon, the age and the thinking pattern that comes with it. The fact that a thing is popular does not mean it is God's way. It may be done by everybody, but it may be a terrible antichrist formula for life. Then it says, but be ye transformed. From the word metamorpho, that's where you get the word metamorphosis. Egg, lava, pupa, adult. Allow yourself by the word. He says that as we behold, as in a mirror, the glory of God, he says, we are changed, metamorphosed. In other words, I am born from a system that is antichrist in its context. My environmental conditioning makes for me to reject God. I have been programmed by birth to consistently eat of the tree of life but I subscribe to a system of renewal that begins to edit my mind begins to transform my life and he says by that I will be able to prove that good that perfect that acceptable will of God the Bible says to set your minds on the things above where Christ is seated you can set your mind. I choose to love. Love is a choice. The hallmark of transformation in the kingdom is not power. It's not faith. It's love. The depth of your transformation is not spiritual illumination. It's not enlightenment. It's the degree to which the love of Christ has been resident within your person. I can know your degree of transformation. Not by the scarceness and the acquisition of the knowledge you have because knowledge will increase even prophecies will fail there remain at this tree he says faith hope and love he says the greatest is love having having given them an exegesis on the gifts of the spirit he said behold i show you a more excellent way please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? The system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water scammed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside as rich as you are have you ever lost your atm and you stand angry as rich as you are they just made a transfer and you are hungry the atm is looking at you you are looking at it the difference between you and your breakthrough is that atm imagine how small things cause big trouble small key atm that's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link you've done step a b c d step e which is the last step you may not know and stay there for 10 years until god by his mercy comes for some of you that last step is what you are getting tonight you have prayed you have fasted you have done what you need to do hannah
Hannah went at Shiloh, the Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish. The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They build and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy, that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed, but the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor i jump from here by mistake i will fall gravity will not say no i'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think in the US, he said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building. God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build. We get the raw materials. 
and then we say based on this and that and that I will build this great destiny in the name of Jesus we, we can be well meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings not just through intentions it was Bishop Oyedepo who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed you know he came and he was going to run an errand for him and he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him I hope I'm right with the story and then he opened you know a compartment full of money and then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say no I don't want this and he looked at him and blessed him and he says from today God has given you the grace of on time that before a need arises the supplies are there now that's how to bless so he can now go and build because there is prophecy listen unbelievers know this they prepare their work together then they now go to dark powers and say i'm ready to build i'm ready for election i'm ready for this i'm ready for the scholarship i'm ready to build the business i have done everything i just returned from harvard with my certificate but i know that a body without a spirit is dead therefore let there be prophecy on it they carry that thing and they finish what they have started God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy. You don't speak as you are commanded. You speak. You are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was standing. Didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking... The gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe if they would induce or do something or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word 
for breakthrough. The word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Jimmy, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger when it delivers it returns back and says I have done what you sent me to do then he sends the word on errand again listen words are not just talkings because when Isaac listen blessed Jacob Esau came and said don't you have any other thing he said it is finished was the talking finished so words are not just speaking you are a boy Yes, you said that is word in English, but in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I, I I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package, then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit. And then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why 
deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand there. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes and you don't receive it. And it goes back. He sent forth his word. When they received the word, the word healed them. The word delivered them. So he sent forth healing. He sent forth deliverance. But they were carried in a tray called words. This is the mystery. Men receive. That's why when you see people talk about the word, word, most people, even those who teach it, they don't even really fully understand what they are saying. They think it is speakings that gives you intelligence. No. Words convey information. They convey thoughts. But that's not the only thing they do. There are mighty systems of impartation. Words. I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing. You receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city, Jesus was teaching. Find out whether there be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years. When the word gets to HIV, HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that he's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and, ah, you see, not this guy, this, this 33-year-old body is fooling people. This is not 33-year-old. This is the ancient of days, hidden in a 33-year-old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny. You can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. 
the word is received the power as many as received that word he gave them power that came with the word to become power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts come sam come this lady if this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say i just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys i say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her but something on her is fighting him you are supposed to get a job the person promised heaven and said and just a signature to get that job but something on you make sure that your paper is taken away from the list this is what we came to correct tonight that by the power of prophecy that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer, they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build 
but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it. Listen, remember you can't get to the office. But there's something that can get there. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. And that word will rest on your employment letter. And the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours. Now remember, the man may not be born again, so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm. The word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I... The slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, What is this again? If you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering. Where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squallow that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished, go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we are going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I like you to declare, declare and pray. Please pray, take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved.
changing the entrance of thy word give it light the entrance of thy word give it favor the entrance of thy word give it restoration media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, 
open your mouth whatever left me that should not leave me you must return back opportunities dimensions in the spirit cooperate with me I want us to finish very fast and so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time but I want you to please believe are we together words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life was it not because Jonah entered a boat innocent people on a voyage a man carried something, entered their boat, they lost properties, lost, they were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me, throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my by the spirit of might. In the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two the roadside online I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place I declare and I prophesy I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight therefore I declare judgment judgment upon the hand of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus Christ judgment upon the wicked judgment upon the wicked hallelujah the spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors shakatabata now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of jesus i judge that spirit one two three shout 
Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside, be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakatojetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial, it could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. I decree and I prophesy. Right now in the name of Jesus, let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects 
movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus movements in the body I cause it now in the name of Jesus everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here I take it out of your body now I take it out of your body now look at me my dear this lady lift your hands I stretch my hands now I saw fire coming on you right now I declare that devil must let you go I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost now be set free in the name of Jesus all those in front I declare the count of three the spirit that manifested must let you go I speak as one sent from God at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 out of their lives and out of their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ trusting God for jobs you are trusting God for a job just keep your hands lifted I just saw something that looked like a parcel we are going to pray for the sick but I'm stretching my hands fire is leaving my hands I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit and it's come not everybody but in the name of Jesus Lord those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations where are they oh God I send your anointing kalato sebahasha embrekete kete kotele kete konasa akatos kale karonsa siana kata in the name of Jesus let there be miracle jobs to those people by the spirit in the name of Jesus who is yakubu oh my god now i want us to pray for the sick who is yakubu Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you come? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams dreams yes. that's what i'm saying dead people yes, you I see dead them. people in dreams I have seen them. this is what i'm saying if you did not come here i saw that you were somewhere around pz and a car just came you're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you that's how they left you on the ground there but in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit behind why am i saying god is saving families from the spirit of death i just saw like an arrow right now any family here any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus 
God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. Agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders. In the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering. But don't just sit and just be looking. I'd like you to believe because immediately after this, I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people, PR protocol, please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare that every delayed promise, say it again, that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into it now. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. online I want you to believe pray believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pray this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you visit impossible situations O God of heaven in 
the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life, let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I cast that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. The Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood sucking spirit will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos, peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love. The spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers. That together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this where matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God. So the issue is not just about Christians. It's not just about Muslims and all of this. My perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody. When the spirits are at work, our responsibility as believers is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray 
and speak peace it says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligence system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the lord let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope while we continue speaking life let me balance this because if if god forbid but if i die today it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of god for the saints so on one side while you weep and mourn for what has happened the word of god is bigger than any man i'm saying this because sometimes satan uses these things to discourage the body of christ let god be true and every man including the best of us be a liar so make sure you continue to stand on your convictions be sympathetic to people don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people but maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what god has said should be are we together now i speak to everyone here the covenant of protection you have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of i declare in the name of jesus the grace that has protected us the grace that has protected this this ministry may that grace speak in your life yeah. i forbid the earth nor the sword from receiving your body in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you like we prophesied october is not done yet between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus or number two that I need to make my ways right with Jesus I love Jesus but I feel a need for a restoration please wherever you are we have just a minute or two for you I'd like you to boldly leave your seat please every time we make an altar call like this give the people chance to come don't intimidate them let there be no movings and let the people come wherever you are you are saying apostle if you will lead me to jesus i will gladly hand over my life to him wherever you are i want to pray for you please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here god bless you for your boldness people are coming outside are you coming make your way quickly god bless you make your way jesus is talking to someone this is a time when you should hearken to his voice god bless you god bless you god bless you if you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online. Be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time. There's no distance. God bless you. Keep coming. I see a gentleman coming. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you always ready to give you a new beginning the bible says to him that is joined to the living there is hope say after me lord jesus look at this my adorable children make sure you say lord jesus too, dear ones say lord jesus 
I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my Savior, you be my Lord, you be my King. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. And right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I'm a child of God. Amen. Jesus, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your spirit. Let the grace that saves, let the grace that keeps rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ. They will go from glory to glory. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus. From today, you move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I salute you once again. Thank you for this very bold decision. Please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you. Just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you. Please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.